YouTube and welcome to this episode of the Gunman Raw. So today we've got a VA Falcon. I'm pretty sure it's a VA anyway, I could be wrong there. VA, yeah, I think that sounds right. XR6, uh, dark blue one. So pretty straightforward job really. I've already got the prep work done obviously. Um, all masked up and we're ready to go. I've already given it a prep sole. And now I'm just going to give it a good tack rag down. So I've found this is the best way to um, mask up when you've got little repairs that come in here. i found you're best off just going up to this line here and just spraying the whole thing. It's, I think it makes for a better job. It looks nicer and no blends or anything. You've got the very fine edge there which the door actually covers anyway. So yeah. Whatever, I've, I've done it many a different ways, I've just found over the years this is the quickest and easiest and, and best way. So I did get the panel meter to pull that door off because the repair came inside the dam a little bit. This is a 599 uh, base coat blender. This is one of those colors, it's like the 50-50. You'd probably just get away without using it, but it does have a little bit of metallic and pearls in there, so if you have a 50-50, just use it. Yeah, I think that's about it. Some color down. So this is my latest favorite gun, the Black Mamba LS400 Entech. So it's basically just a supernova, the same as all the other supernovas, just got a different design on it. But yeah, this is a, a gun. I used one of these LS400 years ago when I was um, first started using Chromax Pro. One of the painters that I was working with had one of them, he said, hey, let us know what you think of this gun. I used it for clear coat, and I absolutely loved it. And I've actually wanted one ever since. But um, last time, I thought I'd go for the WF when I got the Lotus, because people say that's the better one for clear coat. However, I found this is probably the better one for clear coat and base coat <laughs> um, in a smashed up environment. When, um, when you're just looking for factory finishes and you are looking for that bit more efficiency. Now this is a HVLP gun but it does spray a bit different than most HVLPs I'm used to. Um, any of the developers and starter HVLPs don't seem to spray it as nice and as um, fine an atomization as this gun here. Again, it's one of those things that like, you know, for DIY guys doing it at home, now nah, stay away from this gun. You've got nothing to gain by getting it. It's going to cost you a bit more money than what is necessary and all that, but people in the trade, hell yeah, I'd recommend it. Nice big fan on them. So the settings I've got at the moment are two turns out on the fan, so you wind that right in and then come out two full turns, full fluid. And it's around 25 psi, yeah, uh, give or take. So they reckon that 26 psi at the inlet is 10 psi um, at the cap, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty cool now at the moment. I mean, it's cooling down here in parts. It's pretty much bang on the middle of winter where we are at the moment. So, I've got the boost cranked up to, I think, 27. Yeah, 27 and a half. 
Some of the other guys like spraying at 30, but I don't know, man. It just gets too hot for me sometimes right up at 30. I always used to. In saying that, I always used to spray at 30. But i am just turned it down a little bit. Just in this booth. The next booth next door. That one just over there. I'll leave that at 30 because it's a bigger cabin. But actually, even when you set it at 30, sometimes it doesn't even get up to 30. It'll just get up to like 27 anyway. So, the colour code is PT, and the name of the colour was Steel from memory. The colour wasn't great off the machine. I did end up doing a little bit of colour matching, and um, obviously we're, we're blending everywhere anyway, except for the bumper. Obviously my colour's going straight up to there, but it was pretty good. I got it pretty good, as I say, not perfect. I think this is actually a pretty reasonable size repair, this one on this quarter panel. The, um, the quarter was sewed right in, it was right on the line, so yeah, Panamita spent a bit of time getting it to look right. It blocked down quite well though, that quarter panel was pretty straight when I blocked it down. Um, this door here, he actually left too much body filler in the door, so I ended up having to block keep blocking through my primer and block half of his body filler out of this section around here and then the big UV primer to the rescue once again UV stage today so I've mixed up 400 mils of colour that's um, including reducer these days I've actually been mixing up my my base coat colours RFU which means ready for use So ready for use means thinners included. So yeah, 400 mils, including the thinners. So it's all covered now, as you can see. I can't see through any primer patches or cut throughs or anything like that. So we'll just let that flash off for a minute and we'll put our last coat down and then we're gonna be ready for clear. And on this job here, I'll be clearing with this same gun again. See there's something going on here. I'll just pop a bit of colour over that. Up under there. Right now, let's go for that last coat. I'll drop that pressure down to 20 psi. I just found it, it goes on, yeah, good on the last coat at 20 psi. All the other settings stay the same though. Just hold that gun back. Just let those metallics just land on from a distance. Give that blend. Right here, YouTube, let's get back to this job now. So yeah, got the clear coat in the gun in the beautiful black mamba, baby. And yeah, ready to clear. So I've got the standoff standard clear. I'm gonna open up a new nice clean section of the tack rag. And fingers crossed we'll get this job nice and clean. The less less polishing, the better. Nobody likes polishing except the detailers, so... been about 10 minutes since I worked out 
and it's still nice and dry, obviously, or else my tack rag would be sinking into the bait boat and it's not doing that, so that's always a good thing. Um, yeah, let's go. I've actually left the settings the same. Well, apart from the pressure, but the fluid's still full, the fan still two turns out. Spraying in the next booth, Frankie, the old guy that works here with us. He's like 58 or 59 years old or something like that, and um, he bought this $200 copy starter jet. And I hate to say it, but it actually sprays pretty damn good. I'm not really a big fan of copy spray guns, I've got my reasons for that. I've been criticised. For well, that, nothing fairly so, you know, everyone's got their own opinion. You don't always have to agree on things, but I don't know. The way I say it with coffee guns is at least do something to make it original. Don't just ride on someone else's frame, you know, like you're so close to making your own gun. Why not just change it, even if you just change the way it looks, you know, kind of copy their R&D on their atomization technology, but I don't know, at least make it look a little bit different so it's at least something half original. But then they know that they wouldn't sell half the guns because they're riding on someone else's plane, so that's obviously why they do it. That's all good. I'm going to flick that cam off and um, wait for probably five, five or so minutes. I didn't actually hate the clear up because this is the last job for today. So I'm not like in a hurry to get this job out of the booth or anything. So as I say, I'll just give it give it five minutes to flash off and then get that second coat on. I'll see you back here in a second. Radio back to a YouTube show yet. Yeah, probably only been three or four minutes. I did my little tack test. You can sort of feel here that it's tacked off nicely. Um, I did use a uh, fast hardener, even though it is the last job of the day. Um, I'm just used to fast hardener, I'm used to using it. Sometimes like you go to use slow hardener and you, um, you spray it as if you're using fast hardener and it um, goes and runs on you. Yeah, this job here is not even going to get a bake at all. That's sort of like that point in the day, it's not really even worth it. It's like 3 o'clock or nearly 3 o'clock and we finish at 4 o'clock here so you know, nobody else is going to need the boot, so there's no real use in, in baking. It's just a bit of a waste of gas, I guess. See, I mixed up 550 mils for this job which I was pretty sure was going to be a bit too much but I wasn't too worried because there's a guy next door Frizzle, my mate, and he's about to clear a job up and I think he's going to even just use this gun as well so I didn't worry about mixing up a little bit extra I reckon 500 mils would have just got there but mixed up that bit more just just as I could Right here, let's just have a look over that, make sure it's all nice and wet. Probably go a bit wetter there. Uh, it's got a bit more dust in it than I would have liked, but... Oh well, you get that sometimes.
reckon that's looking pretty good. Pretty good. I'm happy with it. Yeah, there's probably that 50 mils left. Probably just that 50 mils. Have a quick look over it. Colors blended out pretty nice. Clear coat looks pretty factory to me. Gunners, I'll see you in the next one. Get out there and paint some shit. Come on.